Hey everybody, it's Mark, Dr. Deadwax. It's time for the Inbox Challenge 2, Day 10. So this is one-third of the way through. 33.33333%. 33 and a third. This is the long play edition of the Inbox Challenge, which I guarantee will be under 20 minutes. Um, today's numbers were picked by the Earthworm Zodiac. Jeremy is his name. And he picked three numbers. Three numbers. Which means I can only do three, or it gives me a chance to pick a couple of my own. And what I decided to do was pick two records uh, that a friend of mine sent me as part of a package of VCLT. There were more than two, but these are two I haven't talked about yet. Um, and they're from uh, Alan. So let's start with those, then we'll get to Jeremy's. First one that Alan had sent me, this is... Uh, John Coltrane, Giant Steps. And this is on like a the That's Jazz imprint on Atlantic. So this is, you know, we're looking at, uh, I don't know, mid 70s, early 80s. This is uh, a German pressing. I think it's a German pressing. Alan cleaned them for me with Le Art de Son record cleaning solution. I put them in these lovely sleeves. This is a German pressing, and it says copyright 1976. I don't know what that means, but anyway, this is just stunning pressing and uh, fantastic sounding record. You know, I'm always after the firsts and the earlies and the whatever. Well, this is a record you can't find a first of or an early, and uh, I don't have this in my collection until now. This is an amazing record. This is an amazing sounding copy. I'm just totally thrilled to get it. This is actually a gatefold. So it has some story, some detail. So there's a whole series of these uh, Dutch jazz things. Um, Giant Stats, Cousin Mary, Countdown, Spiral, uh, Saida Song Flute, Naima, and Mr. PC. And, you know, this is a monster. Can't really say much more. Um, it's giant steps. And I'm just thrilled to have it. it. Came in these fake flakes. I guess they're uh, Japanese. And they do the job just perfectly. So it's giant steps. It's just a fantastic record. Thank you very much, Alan. Next is. The greatest jazz concert of all time. This is Charlie Parker, Volume 1, the Massey Hall concert. Now this is Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Bud Powell, Charles Mingus, and Max Roach. And this is uh, May 15th, 1953 at, I believe that was the date. Um, May 15th, 1953, Massey Hall, Toronto. It's, it's called the greatest jazz concert ever. And it's called that by a lot of people, not just me. Um, and this is on uh, the Saga label, which looks like that. And uh, so this is Bebop, not Hard Bop. This is 1953. This is Hard Bop's coming in. Hard Bop exists in some circles, but these guys are the masters of Bebop. And Charlie Parker was, you know, the master of bebop. And uh, Dizzy's on trumpet, just a total bebop king. Uh, Bud Powell on piano, the best bebop player probably. Uh, maybe period. Definitely the best bebop piano player. Charles Megas on bass. What do we need to say about Charles? Max Roach on drums. The man is one of the great touches. So these guys, there was a, the New Jazz Society or something like that in Toronto. And they these four of them went down to New York City in 1953. And they, the goal was to get the best bebop players ever to come to Toronto and play a show at Massey Hall. And they went down and they signed these five guys to come up. These guys apparently never played together before and never played together 
since. This is the only time they ever played together. They didn't practice. They didn't rehearse. They just walked on stage and played. And there's all kinds of stories about, I think, is it Parker had the, had no saxophone. It's, and some of them are true. Some of them are, some of them are, everybody thinks are true and are totally fake. But, uh, I think the night of the show, there was a fight with a rescheduled heavyweight match or something, or with Rocky Marciano. So I don't know if that's right. That's It's way before my time. But uh, because of that fight, the show didn't sell out. The, there were somewhere between 600 and 1,500 people in Massey Hall in a 2,700-seat venue. And as a result, they didn't make enough money to pay the band. So... These guys didn't actually get paid for this concert. Uh, Mingus and somebody else recorded the concert for their own label. I can't remember if it was Mingus and Roach or Mingus and Powell. I can't remember. But Mingus was one of them, and they released them. But Mingus didn't like his the, the way the show was mic'd, and that his bass lines was really uh, quiet. And apparently he redubbed uh, overdubbed his bass parts, so I don't know what quite what this is because this is like a, a subsequent reissue of these. Originally, they came out on three ten inches, and then they were released on vinyl by somebody. And then this is one of these uh, companies that assembles um, like collections. Here they've assembled the the Charlie Parker collection, and this is volume one. And then there's there's other Charlie Parker dates. Um, Volume 2 is Cool Blues, and Volume 3 is Bebop. Uh, no one has Kenny Dorm on it, who I was talking about yesterday. So, um, this is really good. Doesn't appeal to me 100%. While this is the greatest jazz concert ever, um, it's Bebop, and I'm more drawn to hard bop. Also, the miking on this show is kind of distant. It's not... Um, it's kind of like the mic is too far away from the music um, and it sounds wonderful but it's it's kind of it's not as live and in your face kind of miking as I would I would like so that that kind of took away from it a little too but uh, gorgeous clean pressing and it's really nice to have a, a finally a copy of this because I've heard about this greatest jazz concert forever and I've I had it on CD and I you know, that was totally different sounding than that, than this. That was totally processed and tweaked and massaged. And I'm interested to know if these are the Mingus ones with the original live bass or the overdub. That's that's kind of, uh, when I was reading about it, that kind of tweaked my interest. You, you can see, I just musicians, they're just unbelievable. Okay, so now on to Jeremy's records. Thanks again, Alan, for that. That's another great one. That'll be with me forever. First record from Jeremy's Numbers is this. Electric Banana, the 70s. And this is a comp. Um, and Electric Banana are the pretty things. But they recorded several records under the pseudonym Electric Banana for, I think it was a German company who wanted, like, uh, rock and roll music, like library music, to be used in movies and stuff. And, and so a lot of this stuff was used in horror films and softcore porn. And uh, they recorded under the name The Electric Banana so that, you know, their label didn't know they were doing this, and also uh, for uh, kind of anim anonymity because of the subject matter that the their music was being used in, because um, softcore porn, you know. Every nun in the world watches porn now. It's just everywhere, but in the 60s, it was kind of taboo. It wasn't the topic of conversation on polite society that it is now, apparently. Um, so that's what this is. And this is a comp of two records that they recorded for this label in the 70s. There's also another comp called the 60s because they recorded three records for this label in the 60s. And uh, so that's what this is. And it's kind of cool. I mean, it's perfect pressing. It's UK pressed. It's super clean. It's super quiet. It's interesting. It's 
It's fun. It's it's not necessary. Next is uh, Paul Motion on Broadway, Volume One, and this has a uh, Bill for sale. Charlie Hayden, Joe Lovano, and Paul Motion on it. And this is um, featuring the music of Harlan, Harold Arlen, George Gershwin, uh, Jerome Kern, and Cole Porter. And this is on uh, the JNT label. No, oh, I didn't show the uh, Pretty Things label. Or, sorry, the Electric Banana label. This is on uh, Butt. So it has this on one side, and on the other side it's got this ashtray full of cigarette butts. Uh -huh. um, so back to this uh, Paul Mosher. So this is it on uh, JMT. This is German pressing and uh, this Again, these, the Germans know how to make vinyl. The Germans, the Dutch. Uh, people like UK pressings, I think the Germans and the Dutch really make excellent vinyl. And it's often priced under. This is an expensive record. I paid four bucks for this, but this actually sells sometimes for 60, 80, or 100 bucks on eBay. I think Anders said he had this one. I showed it in after the big and that he'd spent a lot of money tracking down the other one, or he'd had the other one and spent a lot of money tracking down this one. Um, this is glorious. This is, you know, it's show tunes, but it's so well done by these guys because they're just masters of their craft. And it's beautifully recorded. It has this uh, wonderful soundscape. The guitars are right up front. The the bass has got this beautiful depth of tone to it. Um, the cymbals are all light and shimmery and airy. It's just, this is just really well done. Uh, I now need to spend far too much money to find the other one too. I need to find another one of these too. It's got a little nick on it that ticks for a couple minutes. So I, I will be spending far too much money to find another one of these too. But uh, this is great. This is, uh, this is a wowzer. I mean, I love Paul Motion. I love his stuff on ECM. He's very often kind of um, not avant-garde, but he's very he's he, a lot of his music's kind of pushing towards avant. Um, you know, it's not always um, overly accessible to some people. It's not uh, you know it, because it's kind of pushing. But this is totally accessible. This is and still fantastic which is which is hard to do in my opinion because so much um, of this stuff is played to death and uh, these guys still capture the magic of it so that's a great record I cannot recommend that enough and uh, the last record that uh, Jeremy picked is uh, Terrence Riptal's Odyssey and you know here this is just another one of these, another ECM record. I think I'm showing one of these a day because that's like how many of them I actually have. I buy every single ECM record I can find, uh, even if I have it, if I know it's a good one. And if I don't have it, I buy it anyway um, because it could be. And this is uh, this was a promo. This is a US pressing. It, this is a two uh, LP uh, set, both on ECM. Wow, that was, that was one of the stupidest things I've ever said. Uh, I've talked a lot about ECM lately. I, I've shown an Abercrombie ECM, and I've shown a couple other ECMs in the past 10 days. And I've said, you know, that they're good, and that they are they have that ECM atmosphere, and uh, they're kind of soundtrack to your life, and all the beautiful tone and everything that, that ECM has. But I've said, you know... They're, they're excellent records, but they're not essential. This is fucking essential. This is... I have this... I have a, a, a needle drop of this in uh, high-res flak that I listen to on my um, iPod when I walk, so I'm highly familiar with this. This is a record I absolutely adore, and I was just thrilled the day I found this in a store. And this is, an, this is a pretty good copy. I mean, 
Vinyl's a lot cleaner looking than the cover. Vinyl could be a little bit cleaner. The CD of this does not have all the tracks that are on this record too. So, um, but this is this is a giant of a record. When I've said that other ECM records aren't essentials, this is this is like I said, this is one of the essentials. This is one of the top twenty-five ECM records ever made. Terz is just smoking on this record and um, it has this great looseness to it and this great atmosphere and this kind of spiritual quality to it and this kind of psychedelic quality to it a little um, just a just a just a great record and the, what I'm even more happy about is this is uh, Polydor US pressing so it's not mastered by Robert Ludwig because he came in later when Warner started distributing the ECM catalog. And uh, in my opinion, the Polydor masterings are better than Robert Ludwig's. I've said it many times, Robert Ludwig, in my opinion, can't master ECM. Um, so this even sounds fantastic. German copy, of course, would be the ideal grail you know, of that for me. But I'll wait till that comes along. Uh, this Paul Motion, again, that's another buyer. Uh, the Electric Banana, it's fun. I mean, if you're a fan of the pretty things, then you, you want that record. Um, th this is the greatest jazz concert of all time, and uh, it's it's pretty good. This foil does this lovely under the chin lighting that makes me look years younger, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, John Coltrane, Giant Steps, masterpiece. Thrilled to have that. So, thank you, Alan, for that VCLT. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. I think you're Canadian. I think you might actually live near me. Um, or maybe even Toronto. I don't know. But thanks for picking the numbers. Thanks for playing along. I think you got numbers in last year, too. Um, so, and uh, you've done some of my other contests. So, as always, thanks for engaging and uh, participating. And thanks everybody for your comments. And that's it. That's day 10 done. 20 more to go. Have a great day, everybody. Keep the record spinning.